we can get right into it. Question, of course. Mekuja with pen? Do you have a notebook? Aya, kuna swali. Are you ready? What is the best thing that has happened to you so far this year? Discuss 20 marks. If you're not discussing, we'll attend a thambi because you're not obeying instruction. So the question again, what is the best thing that has happened to you this year? Discuss 20 marks. Tafta Jirani. Hiya, your neighbor has shared. I'm a bad one and a bad one and a share. My brother, he liko opportunity mzuri akusema yeye. Lakini, lakini sawa. If you don't get it, you don't get it. Sawa, sawa. Have they told you what the best thing that has happened to their life is? Ah, where when you na mark? Unona ni kama inatosha. Inatosha the twenty marks. Eh? Inatosha. Ah, yeah, sawa, sawa. Ah, the title of my teaching today is "There is more." Tell your neighbor there is more. You see what they have told you that the best thing is. Tell them that there is more. Um, and I just want us to read from the book of Philippians chapter 3, from verse 12 all the way to 14. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 12 to 14. It says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected. Mtansedia kusoma tifadhali. Sawa, sawa. Three, two, one. But I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14, I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That will be the basis of my teaching today. Um, and before we get into it, uh, let us just, let me ju allow me to lay a foundation on the same. Um, when we look at life, uh, the nature of life itself, the way God has designed life, it's that it is progressive in nature. True or true? A good example um, is the life of a child. When a child is born, this child is already perfect, complete with everything that it requires to do what? To go through life. But is the child okay? Uneza ndiko mtoto kazi wakati? Not at all. There is a process to it. There is a progress to it that it, all, uh, that it will allow it to come to a space where it is all sufficient for the things concerning life. And it's the same thing with us and God. That when God designed us, when we were created, or rather when we are with God, says that everything that pertains to life in godliness is found in him, yes. And when we are created, or rather when we accept Jesus Christ, we are complete in him. But before we make the most out of this life, there is something that happens. It is a continuous process. We grow pole pole in beats and beats and lips and bones until you get to a place that we have attained full maturity. And full maturity, I want to think, or I know, cannot be attained into uh, while we are still in this earth. Cindy, being perfect and completely transformed uh, and completely transformed into the image and likeness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will also happen at the last, at the last day. So a good example again as we go back to the, is the biological process of a child. That when, their child, when the child is born, the child is perfect and complete, lacking nothing that will allow it to do what? To live life. That, but, and even though they are born complete, uh, we have to understand that kuna vitu ambazo huyo mtoto hawezi fanya nini? Hawezi fanya. For those of us that have been in spaces that, we have been ta that we've taken care of, uh, of a young child, for those of us that are parents in this house, house or for those of us that are firstborns, na unajua kama we ni firstborn, unaelewa that African parents wanakuanga sa zingine na kitu inaitua mambu mingi, sindio? 
we unadhani ya wendi ulifunga alafu oops senye unamaliza shule ndio kengine kana ku kana kuja alafu alafu inakuwa ni we unafanya nini unalea aka kengine si ndio inakuwa wewe ndio the deputy pa the deputy parent true or true so we've been in spaces that we've uh, we've had the opportunity to interact with a little child and for the most part while they are still young they cannot do anything for themselves right what uh, what happens therefore the person that is uh, the person that is around them now the caregiver is in charge of making sure that the child is what that the child is okay though the child is complete they cannot take care of themselves they have to depend on a caregiver or rather on a guardian or the parent somebody that will be looking after them juki mwacha peke yake hakuna kitu tapata mefa if you leave the child kama melala na mgongo if they are that young kama ni mtoto mdogo utapata tu amelala hivyo na kama hata kwa melala hivyo atakuwa amezunguka 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 ameenda kuanguka kwa kitanda si ndio so the cages are uh, wale ambao wako na wako ina space again or you've had a baby can it work a baby cot praise the lord wale ambao walikuwa na baby cots kama walikuwa na baby cots ni sa kama you your baby cot the side of it um the the barricades on the side it's for the child to do what to stay within the court juki kaachilia katafanya nini nika kitenzi kishirikishi ambacho akijitegemei si ndio you all rem ah bas you all remember kitenzi kishirikishi hakijitegemei kinategemea mtu mwingi kinamtegemea mtu mwingine and then as you continue ah um, while you're still taking care of the child the child begins to grow it grows in stages it comes to a place where um I want to think this is the place where it's most misunderstood that mtoto ameboeka tu anataka kuota jua and guess what the parent does anampatia chakula yani wao melia kwa sababu umekasirishwa na vile uko tu kuna ka but your parent thinks or rather the care gives thing, the caregiver thinks that you are just hungry that you are an throat tantrums because they are just just angry so at that stage the caregiver tries to understand the child but it's from a place of the cues unataka unampatia chakula uone kama atatulia like i don't understand how the first resort is always going for is always going for food uone kama yote nyamaza and then anakata unatafuta another cue and look for a way to make the child do us to make the child come down and then it grows to another space that it's able now to communicate you know that stage and you na kambianga sema baba sema mama and you are so happy about it and you just want to hear the child talk kila wakati kila wakati unamfundisha huo baby jesus baby jesus and then they become a year old and you're like just sit, sit down and shut up nyamaza usijaribu kuongea sitaki kusikia makelele hapa how it transitions to that i don't understand but yeah mambo ya mungu ni me ni mengi so it comes to a place where you can now maybe understand uh, the child is able to communicate clearly but so that you are able to understand you know what it wants because it's it's able to also say what it wants you know what to give it because it knows what to ask for but still the child is still under the caregiver it cannot depend on itself entirely and then it grows to the uh, to the other level now this is maybe the teenage level and this child is now they think that you know they are okay they are all grown up and they know their rights and if you tell an african parent that you know your rights we were doing the restart edition they restart you kupatia <laughs> anakupatia moja safi and then you come back to your senses and you know that rights ni mambo tu mingi it's just in the constitution not in the house ndio so yeah it comes to a place where uh, it's a teenager and it's able to communicate again still while it's still a teenager there are things that it cannot do what they cannot do for themselves they still rely on a caregiver or rather the parent or the guardian that it's a continuous process and then they trans, uh, they mature now to a, uh, to a young adult um, to a young adult and now they are total they can depend on, th on themselves not totally though but they can depend on themselves they, you can depend on, the, on themselves to make decisions they can depend on, the, on themselves to do what to uh, take care of their own selves they can depend on themselves kufanya the most in in life but still the caregiver is around and though the shadow of the caregiver is there but it's not as huge as it was well they were still young true and then they become a full grown adult and sasa ni wewe na wewe peke yako wewe na mungu every man for himself hapo ndio unaambiwa mliacho kwa mkono ya nani 
serikali si ndio hapo ndio pia unakuja unaambia watu cheki tusibishane mimi mtu mzima si ndio you can confidently say that kwa sababu gani you have grown to that level that you know and you know that you are not a child any longer you have transitioned to a different level therefore when we look at that process you see what we said when we begin that life is progressive in in nature true or true that as the way god has designed it is that it is complete from the onset but it goes from a place of re- uh, unveiling one level to the next level to the next level until you get to a place of full maturity and it's the same thing for us in this journey of salvation we as believers are when we get born again um the hymn that says that um that's at uh, that moment when a uh, sinner confesses that at that moment a pardon they do what they receive immediately in that space we are justified true or true but we are not experiencing the fullness of god kwa sababu gani there are levels to it that we need to do what to unveil we need to go deeper or rather continue to fellowship deeper with god to get to this place of where we can enjoy in full maturity uh, to the place that paul comes and says that i do not consider myself to have apprehended and remember when he is saying this when he had spoken in the previous verses uh, the, the verses preceding the ones that we have read uh, he's talking about uh, his former life and his new life and then he comes back uh, and then he comes to this place where saying he's not he has not done what he has not apprehended the whole thing the former life him being a pharisee of the pharisees um, and i don't know a hebrew of hebrews and pertaining to the law perfect and everything and then he, co- he comes and talks about how he has been transformed by jesus christ and that his only desire is to know him and to get acquainted with his dad and to just have fellowship even deeper with him so in that we understand that god the way he has designed it it's that it is progressive in nature that is me as a young uh, me as a believer and also life in itself if it's in the bad thing again it's also progressive in nature i remember when he's talking about the state the state in romans chapter is it chapter 1 when he's talking about how these people were given over to their wickedness that they also looked for new ways of doing what indulging in their sinful ways so if it's to the positive it is progressive towards the poor and if it's also to the negative again it is progressive towards the negative if there is no place where life comes and does what and it's just a stand still that it plateaus or and when it comes to that place it is in the human heart to also want to do what to do something else to continue it we are not designed kukaa tu mahali at uko tu hapo and this is okay and you feel like there is more that i should do this uh, there, there is there is more that i should be doing if it's a good thing there is more of a good thing that you should be doing if it's a bad thing again you want to indulge even even more and throughout scripture god has also confirmed this that um when we look uh, when we are uh, when we look at the theme of the year they are redigging and repossessing that uh, that text uh, genesis chapter 26 uh, genesis chapter 26 i think verse 12 and 13 give us genesis chapter 26 verse 12 and 13 it says then isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the lord blessed him next verse read uh, help me read the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became it was progressive right he began from somewhere it continued increasing until there was no more increase in it yani he became so prosperous that hakuna kitu kingine tunaongezea kutoka hapo si ndio i remember abraham's promises when god was calling abraham all the promises that god gave abraham all the promises were future right he was not giving him promises for there and now he was giving him promises for him tell uh, god telling abraham that his descendants will be as numerous as the sands by the seashore rather as the stars in the sky abraham never lived to see this si ndio but we are able to see this because scripture says what that we just like isaac are, are what children or rather sons of the promise anyone that is, has accepted jesus christ we are born into this new family we are also able to be called again with abraham right the promises that god gave abraham um if it's increasing if it's wealth if it's blessing all these things were future and remember when god called abraham abraham was wealthy and god continued increasing abraham again it was progressive in nature proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 give us proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 it says but the path of the just is like a shining sun that shines ever brighter unto a 
perfect day. That again, it is progressive. It is ever brighter unto a perfect day. Again, and when you read again the previous verses before you get to Proverbs chapter 18, when you read again the preceding verses uh, before that, you see that the wicked also are the same. Their path continues to tend toward, towards what? Towards wickedness. They continue to go down deeper and deeper in their own sinful ways or in their own wickedness. That is the same thing. It is also progressive. There is no place that it, it stagnates or there is no place that there is no progress. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. It says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the, in the desert. Again, it is progressive. He's doing what? A new thing. We are not settling for the place or rather the space. Remember, he's talking about the redemption of Israel. They are not settling for the, settling for the space that they are in, but there is something new that God is about to do what? To do. So he tells them, do not consider, do not get stuck in the past. But today, when, when, uh, while I'm speaking to you today, I am doing a new, I am doing a new thing. There is something that I'm doing that is not in the past, something that you have not, that you have not experienced. Therefore, we can conclude that it is not God's desire that any of his children remain in the same place all the time. His desire is to see his children grow and, and, rather, uh, and become a better version of themselves. And that is spiritually, mentally, and physically. True or true? The Apostle Paul, now let us go back to the text. The Apostle Paul, again in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, gives a good illustration. But before we get to Philippians 3, verse 12, uh, give us Philippians chapter 3, from verse 8 to 11. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 8 to 11. Uh, While well, it's coming up, uh, allow me to just uh, thank you. Yes, indeed, I also count all things as loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Through faith in Christ, sorry, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and their fellowship in his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. This is what Paul was saying, that he may do what his desire is to know him and to do what to have fellowship with his resurrection, that he had already attained that. Remember when Paul is writing this epistle, he's writing this epistle while he's still in prison. He's pre and why is he jailed, or rather why he's in prison, is because he's spreading this new gospel, telling this, uh, spreading the gospel of, or rather the message of, the cross to the people at that, uh, in that period. That is the reason as to why he's done what? He's being sentenced, or rather he's being jailed. So this is a person, if umefika mahali, and you have grown to that space that wewe unafungwa kwa sababu ya hikitu. That it means that you have some bases, like wewe ni ule mse, sindio? It means that whatever it is that you've, uh, you are saying, you have been saying it for a whole, uh, for a whole, for a long time, so much so that whenever it's been pointed, they cannot point that thing without mentioning you. Yani wakirusha mawe hivi kwa gospel, waezi hata Paul. Itagonga gospel na itagonga Paul at the same time. So if he's coming to a place where he's being imprisoned concerning this thing, it means that it, he has come to a place of, he has grown into it, it is now a part of, it is now a part of him. The things that he is teaching, these are the things that he has believed these are the things that he understands and these are the things that he's doing what he's saying that other people should come into it but from verse 12 again verse 12 3 verse 12 he says philippians not that i have already attained or i'm already perfected but i press on that i may lay hold or of that which christ jesus has also laid hold of me remember him saying this he's saying this again from prison having been in prison for the message that is teaching. Then again, he says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. Is that true? I mean, he's in prison because of that. But look at what he says again. Give us verse uh, 13. 
says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14, I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, that for him, Yes, he's in the space that he is in. He has understood the things that he has taught. He has had fellowship with Jesus Christ. But then again, he says, I have not apprehended. Why? Because there is more. There is something that I have to do what? To continue doing, to continue to enjoy this fellowship with Jesus Christ, or rather with my Lord and Savior, to be fully known by him and to know him fully. So I want us to take just three instructions, and then I'll be out of your way from that text. There are three instructions that I want us to take. Number one, I have not attained. That is the first instruction that Paul gives. Or rather, you have not attained. You is inclusive of both me and you. So, I have not attained. And I have not attained means that where I am has, is not what? Where I am is not enough. There is something more that I need to do what? That I need to do. I need to go deeper. I need to understand this thing better. That I'm not coming, I'm not getting to a place that I'm just sitting comfortable saying what? Mahali nimefika, nimetosha. I mean, Paul had the privilege of doing that. Angeka hapo aseme mahali nimefika. He is asa imefanya nini? He is asa imetosha. But look at what he says. I have not attained. Despite the fact that I'm being imprisoned for this gospel, again, I do not consider myself to have done what? To have attained the whole thing. There is something more that I need to do. There is something more that I need to learn. I need to go deeper and understand, understand God even more. And having this at the back of our mind allows us to do what? To increase in the place of prayer and to increase in the place of study, to increase also in the place of fellowship. That me, I know on a daily that, yes, God is doing wonders with me. God is allowing the gospel to be spread by me, but I know I need to get deeper. I need to do what? To continue. Whatever it is that got me to this place, I need to keep at it to do what? To stay in this place or rather continue to be consistent with it to do what? To get to the next level. Him having that mind, it gives him an open mind that sijapata kila kitu. And it's the same thing also with us in life. That the space that we are in, we are, we are putting, uh, we are having this mindset that we have not attained. How to fix your two place, alafu to say, ah, because you remember the parable of the rich fool? He says that now because I have stored um, the grain for myself, and then God is like, your soul will be required of you today. So you don't, we don't get to a place where we say, ah, mahaliniko, it's enough. That will be wrong because with God, there is always something more. Again, even with life, there is always something more. True or true? Let me use this example for those of us, I see a good number of us are young adults. You are praying for that job. True or true? And then the job came. And then you are happy after the first salary, the second, the third, you're looking for something bigger, for something new, right? You're looking for something fresh. You want to grow past that. Sindio, you're telling yourself, Mimi ni kikwa tui visi yu. Nilipwe one million. Ah, nafanya kazi ngini ya nini. And then you get to that place. You are the CEO. You're being paid one million. And then unasikia ule wa cooperative and alipwa 30 million per month. Kaivi wa shikwa? 30 million. Like I have to work for a whole two years kufikisha msharaki ya mwezi moja. Ata... You need jokes, isn't you? And then you desire what? You desire something more. You see, again, life being progressive in nature, that there is always something more that is available, that we are not settling at the place that we are. We are not saying that now, because I have reached this place, I have attained everything that is desired to be attained. There is always something more. Number two, the second thing that I want us to understand, um, or rather the second instruction from that uh, from that passage, it says, uh, forget the things that are behind. Uh, give us again Philippians chapter 2, verse, um, verse 12. Not that I have already attained or I'm already uh, perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus also has laid hold of me. Next verse. 
a brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching towards the things which are ahead. And again, let us go back to that. Uh, let, us con let us go back to the, uh, to the preceding verses before that. Paul is talking about whatever it is that he had already experienced before he comes to this place of, I forget the things that are behind. And whatever it is that Paul is saying, that I am not getting attached to the results. That is what Paul is saying, that I am not getting attached to what? To the results. That whatever it is that has happened, has happened. Fine. Me, I press on. I continue. I refuse to get attached to results. Because um, when the days are good, uh, when the days are good, uh, or rather when the days are good, or when he's seeing his progress, he says, ah, I'm in prison because of this. I mean, Nisawa, let me just, again, sit pretty here and just do nothing. You may talk. But look at what he's saying. He's not getting attached to whatever it is that has already happened. He knows that in his heart there is something more to be, to be gained. Therefore, what is he doing? Getting the experience from whatever it is. Uh, sorry, getting the lessons from the things that he's experiencing and doing what? Continuing moving forward. True or true? Uh, again, Ecclesiastes, Mansolo tells us the same, same thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10. King Solomon. Or Mansolo, I call him Mansolo. Do not say why were the former days better than this, for you do not inquire wisely concerning this. Again, that's another place where Solomon says again, we are not getting attached to what? To results. We are not continuing to, to bask at the glory of the past. There is something more to, go, to be harnessed. There is new, new levels of grace to do what? To go to, uh, there's new levels of grace to be released, uh, new levels of uh, revelation to be also given unto you. Therefore, we do not sit pretty and say, now because the previous days are okay, then we'll sit here. And that is one side of looking at, uh, looking at it. The other aspect, uh, the other perspective of the same is um, having a bad experience in the past. And now we say, now because things were bad in the past, today I'll not do anything for what? For the future. Again, that is me getting attached to the results, or rather the outcome of the thing that has happened. Nasema kwa sababu nilijaribu the first time, and it never worked out. Let's say I tried in business. Halafu wai kufanya kazi. And then I come and say, you know what? Business? Mm-mm. Afadhali kitu ingine kuliko biyasha. Kuliko biyashara. But we have other people that are, that are succeeding on the, on the same, right? And we have other people that have already, uh, that have tried whatever it is that you have tried. They have failed, and then they have done what? Tried again, and this time it was different. The story of Naaman is a good example that the first time he went in, nothing. The second time he went in, came out, nothing. The third time, and then the fourth, and then the fifth, and then the sixth, and then the... That's when, whatever it is that he was seeking, that's when the results, or rather the, inter the result that he was desiring came to do what? Came to fruition. But had he given up on the first, or uh, rather on the second, or rather the third time, because he had tried it in the first time, then the healing will not have, will not have come. True or true? Again, the fishermen, uh, when we were doing the year of the great catch, if they were attached to the result that we have toiled all night, na hatu japata samaki, hivi basi atutarusha nyavuze tute, atutarusha nyavuze tute na. But look at the attitude they say, but nevertheless, at your word, we do what? We try again. We have had the experience. We have taken the lessons that we have taken from that experience. And then we are willing to do what? We are willing to try again. That we are not attaching, again, God to a certain result. We are not putting him in a, in a box and saying that, you know what, because it did not work out, mimi na hiyo kitu nime malizana. Ule mori uliko na textingi, ya mule demu uliko na textingi, ya na misbehave, alafu, all of a sudden you are like, you know what, love, Z, it's not true. What was he pender? Again, that was one person, just a, a fraction of this other thing that you do not know, true or true. So if I am to base, if I am to base my, uh, if I am to base uh, the future decision on this thing, then I'll be missing the, I'll be missing the whole point because it will mean that I am taking this one thing that happened in this way and then going with it as the foundational truth of every other thing that is. Coming. A story is told of a cat, a cat that sits on a hot stove lid. Ile ninimoto ya sufuria. Inakalia hapo ju. Yo paka haita waikalia tena lid moto. But there is one thing you can be sure about. Ata ilidi we baridi, hiyo paka haita ifanya nini? 
haitawai kalia lead baridi. In short, your parka haitawai kalia lead yoyote as long as it's a lead. And sometimes that is us. Ulikalia nini moto, sindio? Ulikalia mahali ambapo, ulikalia kiti kakua ni moto. Allow me to use a seat, ulikalia kiti kakua ni mo? Sasa wewe ukiona kiti yote unajuanga, aa, hii kiti ni mo? Hauta kalia hapo. But it was just one time that the seat was hot. That is us attaching the experiences that we have to, attaching the, resu the, attaching the results to the experiences. Instead of taking the lessons we do what, we are get attached to the results that happened. And that is what God is, call, uh, God is calling us today to do. He says, remember not the former things. Why? Because today I am doing a new thing. That whatsoever it is that happened to you, yes, it happened. Today I'm doing a new thing. Maybe there was somebody that you're trusting, uh, uh, trusting God for their healing for. It did not happen. Again, today, I am doing a new thing. Umeshinda shoot shots the job and uh, you receive, we regret, we regret, we regret. But then again, today, I am doing a new thing. Umeshinda tu hapo kiambia God, I need the breakthrough, the breakthrough, the breakthrough. Months are going on end. It has not happened. But again, today, I am doing a new thing. That is the instruction. Today, I am doing a new thing. And finally, number three, he says, but I press on. I continue to do what? I continue to do the thing that I have continued to do. I continue to trust God all the more. I continue to push even more, knowing this, that mwenye ameahidi, kuhusu ile mambo wenye ameahidi, ni nini? Ni muaminifu. Naneza fanya nini? Anaeza timiza kile ambacho amefanya nini? Ameahidi. Sindio? We have had experiences, or rather we have had testimonies of people. Uh, somebody once told me that ushuhuda, uh, ushuhuda ni yao, uh, mujiza ni wangu ushuhuda ni yao. That me have received the miracle. And then for me, it is to give the testimony. And for you, it's to be encouraged with the testimony that I'm giving. That I press on, to, I continue reaching out to God. I continue to desire to do what? To go deeper. If it's in word, if, in, uh, if it's in the word of God, if it's in the study, again, give us Hebrews chapter 5. Give us Hebrews chapter 5 from verse, is it 12 or 12, yeah, to 14. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to do what? Teach you again the first principles of the, uh, of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But, all, but solid food belongs to those who are full of age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That that's the other place, that if it's in fellowship with God, I'm pressing on, I am going deeper, I'm allowing God to reveal new things to me. Sorry, I'm allowing God to reveal new things to me. I'm allowing God to continue to teach me afresh. Because with God, if he says that um, his ways are not our ways, that our physical mind cannot comprehend fully who he is, then it means at no point am I getting to the place that I say I've comprehended him fully. I'm always at a place of God. I want to know you more. I have known you, uh, I have known you this far, but, get, but I know that there is more that is found in you. I want to go deeper. I want to know you. I want to know you more. Again, also with life, it's the same, same thing. Given that it's progressive in nature, you continue to do the things that you have done to do what? To get into this place that allow you to do what? To be able to enjoy the future. We do not stop. If I have gotten to this place by the grace of God, I continue to lean in the grace of God to do what? To get into the future. If it is by his masses that I am kept, then I continue to lean in his masses, or rather on his masses, to do what? To be kept in the future. Sindio. If it is God that has been my provider, then I continue to lean on God. God's provision, not his means, but his provision. The very aspect that he is the provider, I continue to lean, in, or to, I continue to lean on him to do what? To provide, even for the future. That it's not getting to a place that again I say, ah, I have made it, or rather I have done it. Now I stop at this. So we have said that number one was Allah. Thank you. Number one? Number two? And finally, number three? Let us believe and pray. 
Father, we thank you, King of all glory, for your word today. We thank you for your word that is able to change lives and to change hearts. We ask today, King of all glory, that you'll be unto us according to your word, King of all glory. We ask, O Jehovah, dear Lord, that you'll give us the grace, O Jehovah, to continue to lean in and to trust in you, that our confidence will rest fully on you, King of all glory, on your nature, that you are unchangeable, O God, on your nature, King of all glory, that you hear our prayers, O Jehovah, dear Lord, on your nature, King of all glory, that when we call on your name, you will answer us, O Jehovah, dear Lord, and show us things that, King of all glory, we have not seen before, exceedingly abundantly, above anything that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. Therefore, this morning, O Jehovah, dear Lord, our faith is stirred to continue to trust you, O Jehovah, dear Lord, for better days ahead, O King of all glory. Continue to trust you for newer levels, O Jehovah, dear Lord. We continue to trust you, King of all glory, to go deeper and deeper in you, O Jehovah, dear Lord. We submit ourselves to you. We submit ourselves to the power of the Holy Ghost, our Father. We ask that in this season, O Jehovah, dear Lord, and in the seasons to come, that you will teach us, O King of all glory. Instruct us in your righteousness, O Jehovah, because our paths are continually before you, King of all glory. We ask that you'll continue to order our steps, O Jehovah, dear Lord. We thank you and we honor you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray as I believe. Amen.